Happy holidays from sunny California. I'm here to talk <laughs> Snowbound movies with you. This is Snowbound Cinema. This is our 2023 holiday grab bag. If you're new to the show, you may not know what this is, but I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys know anyway. Holiday Grab Bags is basically when uh, we pick a couple random movies to review. Usually we have rules with these movies. Usually we say, uh, everybody can't have seen your pick. They have to fit a theme. This year we were a little more loose on that. Whether you had seen the movie or not, we kind of didn't care so much. It was more about like not picking obvious stuff. So the themes for this year, uh, the theme for this year is, is Snowbound Cinema. These were all movies icy snowy we wanted like to feel the cold feel the hurt feel the fucking snow and ice and so that's why we went with snowbound cinema and we have three movies on deck and i say three because usually just me and mark right last year's just fucking two movies this year we have a guest it's our first ever guest for a grab bag and that's tommy oh. nuggets well oh, that is tommy. an honor i, I did <laughs> not know i was the first ever grab bag guest so you are the even... first grab bag guest man we thought it that's was fitting we, we had such a great time with you during spoopy season and well, yeah. um let me also take this time quickly to formally apologize to tommy because we were supposed to get one more spoopy episode with him and i fucked up and these poor guys watched winnie the pooh blood and honey which was supposed <laughs> to be that episode <laughs> and we couldn't do the episode so tommy i'm sorry so to make up it's for okay. it we brought you here to ring in the holidays with us well thank you uh you made up for it well enough because this is a little subgenre that i love to talk about and i love to uh choose movies from this i grew up in michigan so there was a shitload of uh you know snowed in nights where all you really could do was watch a movie or or watch tv so um i was happy to be come be on this episode with y'all so thank you man Fuck yeah, we're happy to have you. So as we're doing, so we have Snowbound Cinema, uh, and I have a little scale. So we're going to review three movies. We'll review, we'll reveal what they are in a minute. Um, but I want to quickly just tell you guys, we have a scale. We're going to grade each of these movies on a snowy scale. So here are your options, guys. You have three options. If the movie is just not snowy enough, we're going to go with this. It's snowing in my neighborhood. It's snowing in my neighborhood. Is it snowing in my, maybe it's snowing in my neighborhood. Okay. If it, bumps it up a notch and it goes full-blown blizzard we've got this one yeah that was that was quite a blizzard that was quite a blizzard and if the movie is fucking crazy bananas with the snow we got this one snow so we can go ahead and throw <laughs> any of those grades on uh we don't have to all agree so that's that's our scale it's snowing in my neighborhood Yes, that's yeah, quite I a blizzard. Wrote those down <laughs> and snow again. <laughs> Don't worry, Mark. Aspot will replay them as many, <laughs> maybe annoyingly oh, so. I'm I'm quite impressed because when you said you were going to do a snow scale earlier, I was like, "What are we going to do? Go flurries to blizzard?" And like, you pulled out sound bites mm -hmm. and you got mm -hmm. Aspot hooked into it. Like, you, yeah, dude, we've gotten Good some job. complaints lately that Aspot mm -hmm. has not been on the show, and that's true. <laughs> uh, but that's purely out of my own laziness. So Aspot is back with a fucking <laughs> vengeance this week. He's got all snowy bites. Uh, but before we do that, as we do, the other great part about Grab Bags is that we watch old commercials together, things we remember, or maybe don't remember. <laughs> um, Mark, I have a fucking doozy lined up for you, though, this time, dude. Ooh, nice. Um, usually we do these with toys that we remember, but I thought this time, let's go with... Fill up your sack, guys. <laughs> the Dunkin' Donuts holidays. So yeah, maybe I'm, we'll... I'm a fat guy, so I do remember <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts from the '80s. Yes. Do you remember the fucking Christmas? Do you remember that though? That specific commercial? I remember that guy. He was a, he was kind of like the spokesperson for Dunkin' Donuts. Yes. For the He's longest. time time to make the donuts. He gets up at 6 a.m. Time to make the donuts. <laughs> And I remember seeing the little like cottage view, the aerial view of the cottage uh, from the wow. outside as it's zooming in. So yeah, I watched and a lot of, of TV as a kid, too. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I look at that now. And of course I just want those donuts because they look <laughs> awesome. Um, but I do not, I have no memory of that commercial at all. Uh, I do remember the Dunkin' Donuts spokes guy, but I don't remember a specific Christmas one where he's like in a sleigh traveling <laughs> around. <laughs> 
spreading anyway. donuts, <laughs> spreading <laughs> donuts <laughs> to the good boys and girls of the world, <laughs> spreading high cholesterol to good boys and girls <laughs> all over the world. That's what the eighties. It was like, just go have a donut. Now I'm like, I want a donut, but <laughs> I, I do. I want a donut, donut so fucking bad. There's a Krispy Kreme. There's special edition Krispy Kreme donuts right now that are themed to the movie Elf, and I want okay. them so bad. <laughs> Are they are they just like uh, paint like different colors of frosting? They're like different colors, but like I think the there movie? might be like some character work on them. Like one of them is dressed like an like the elf, like Buddy the Elf. There's a Santa <laughs> nice. one. Yeah, one of them. You know, how Elf makes all the stupid sugary shit in the movie, like the fucking spaghetti, the spaghetti. with all the syrup in it. There's something <laughs> like that, I think, where the icing looks like spaghetti. You know, Will anyway. Ferrell actually was eating that concoction of spaghetti and uh, pop tart, chocolate syrup, M and M's. He actually was eating that every take that they did. So by the time they were done, he was like, "He has diabetes." Yeah, early. I was, <laughs> so I was like, puking. "Is that is that why we haven't seen him in a long time?" <laughs> yeah, he has no feet. <laughs> well, I guess I guess he did turn down like a twenty nine million dollar offer to do Elf two. So probably good, because good of that him. shit right there, he was like, "No, fuck, yeah. I'll do Anchorman two instead and make the worst." He's like, "I'll do Elf two if ever. the Elf is a vegan." <laughs> <laughs> I'll do Elf two if I can eat wood. <laughs> So that first commercial uh, ushers us into our first movie of the night, guys. And that movie, th speaking of things that are soft, sweet, remind you of Christmas, that are loaded with icing, let's talk about The Gray. <laughs> this is the movie from 2011, directed by Joe Carnahan. And we should say it's our first movie of our Snowbound Cinema, and it was picked by Tommy Nuggets. Tommy, why did you pick The Gray? So I like, uh, I like Joe Carnahan a lot. Um, I love narc and I love smoking aces and his, his movies are just super hardcore and like gritty. And uh, so, you know, I think at the time when the gray came out, Liam Neeson was still putting out pretty good movies regularly. He hasn't hadn't relegated himself to like uh, some of the shit he's been doing the last few years. And so I remember being interested in it right away. And uh, I, I just think it is literally out of the massive list of movies that I thought of that are, you know, snowbound cinema. I was like, this one almost makes me feel the coldest because literally these guys are just getting shit on uh, by the elements. And, you know, of course, uh, do a little synopsis. It's basically about a, a are, are they oil men or loggers? I think they're oil men, right? I think they're I think oil they're men. Like oil yeah. Guys, yeah. yeah. And uh, they Liam Neeson, the company doesn't give a shit about them a couple times. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah, you're right. And so, you know, Liam Neeson's character, uh, the main protagonist, is a fucking badass wolf hunter whose job is literally just to keep the wolves, the wild wolves in Alaska, from killing these these guys while they're working on the oil stuff. So, um, I love that they did a lot of that on location in British Columbia. So, like when you're watching the movie and you see some of that extreme weather that they're facing, you're like, Whoa, this is, this is pretty good CGI. No, like that was actual locations that are uh, actual uh, weather happening at the, the location they were filming at. So like they were dealing with some shit and Holy shit. And um, also falling in the stream and having to be wet and cold. Oh yeah. And then like, so I had made a few notes when I was watching the movie and like, there's basically three things trying to kill this group of guys. So I, we strayed away from the synopsis. So basically these dudes on their way home at the end of the season, their they're plane crashes, they go down in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And uh, the few survivors of the plane crash now have to battle three things that are trying to kill them. And it's biology. You know, they still have to eat. They have to drink water. Uh, they have to do the basic necessities to stay alive. And that's made harder by the second thing, the elements, which is the crazy snow and, you know, the fact that they're literally nowhere near any civilization. They're just in the middle of these woods. And then the last and most fun thing trying to kill them is, of course, a pack of insane timber wolves that are fucking just stalking these guys. Um, and so and it's one of those. And oh, in go Liam ahead. Neeson's case himself, too. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's yeah. true. That's <laughs> true because, yeah. you know, we see in the beginning of the movie, he's uh, he's kind of suicidal and he's, you know, we see all these flashbacks to who we can kind of tell right away was probably his wife. But we, you know, find out as the movie progresses what happened to her. And um, I think that adds an interesting thing. Uh, layer and element to the story because this this guy keeping them alive didn't you know didn't even want to be alive anymore basically right. and yeah. uh 
So right, why, fun- why would you summon the will to live or want to live past that if you didn't want to live when things were normal ish, right? right? Before right. you went on a plane crash. I think that's one of the many interesting questions the movie poses. Absolutely. And and one thing I think is funny, like, you know, Liam Neeson's job, he wasn't like a sheriff, a badass sheriff or a badass CIA agent. He was literally a wolf hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you're gonna listen to someone in that scenario, I, I would listen to you know what's funny hunter. though? It's like that's a badass job, and we're sitting here laughing and joking about it because it's fucking crazy. It's like such a movie job. But most of the other guys that he crashes with are like have no respect for him. Like fucking guy shoots oh, yeah. dogs. Like this dude never drinks with us. I forgot asshole. Frank Grillo was in this movie and he's a fucking <laughs> asshole. He's like great oh, yeah. in it. But yeah. he's a fucking asshole to Liam Neeson specifically about his job, and he doesn't respect anything that Liam Neeson says. Well, and By the I way, think... what's kind of interesting though is their positions flip flop because he wants to live and then he chooses to die. Yet yes. right. Liam Neeson yes. wants to die. And then chooses to live. Actually, f- speaking of Frank Grillo, Matt, that's probably one of his best performances. Yeah, like, dude. One of my he's, favorite so. scenes is when he finally introduces his name. Like he's an asshole, but mainly because of his fear, and that's his way of dealing with it. But I love the fact that he finally changes, and you get to see the real him. And he's like, that scene is so moving too. When he yeah, he just himself he, he, finally he comes to it's terms so with him. Good. You know, he basically gives up trying to be the alpha because I felt like that was another theme in the movie is the men are trying to determine the alpha within the group while right. running from a wolf pack that's being led by an alpha. Yeah, uh, they, they sort of parallel each other. Thing because yeah. there, there's a fighting, bet- it's all happens exactly. off screen, yep. but there's like this whole drama. And there's that the Omega wolf, wolf that gets pushed out that's like an outsider, like... The right. wolf shit is paralleling what's happening with the human beings, which is really cool. Yeah, it's totally. something I never fucking picked up on. Um, I, I should say I've only seen this movie twice. The first time I saw it, I saw it in the theaters. But I, I wanted this is what I want to talk to you guys about. It's to me, it's a very different experience watching this movie as a younger man. Like I think I was 28, 29 when I saw this, and now watching it as a 40 year old dude, how it completely shifts your perspective on this movie because. The first time I saw it, I think I was truly unfair to it. I think my worst sensibilities as a moviegoer were cranked up. Like, if you think I'm bad now with, like, the the last drive-in kind of exploitative shit, like, <laughs> I was, like, an asshole about this movie because I couldn't see past the fact – I couldn't see past the marketing. I was like, I want Liam Neeson punching wolves movie. Uh, yeah. And when I didn't get that, I acted like a spoiled bitch about it. And I yeah, watched the trailer. it now. Yeah, dude, the trailer and the trailer leads you that way. They have right? it, it's wolf. not some yeah. fucking Rambo fest. And now, as a 40 year old man, like I got so much more out of this movie yesterday than I ever have. Like it felt like a, the best of a survival drama that I've ever seen. Like in terms of e- even just the interplay between the guys, the camaraderie, the, the, the bond that forms like and then you care about each guy and the, the power that the, the simplest things have the fact that they like they get the idea to start collecting the wallets of the dead to give right. them to the families. And then each time a guy goes, they take his wallet. And right. so at the end, you've got Liam Neeson looking at these wallets, looking at them, at these guys' memories, at these guys' lives. Like it fucking got me, man. It got it me gets, in a fucking great way. Great it way. gets deep. It's funny. Cause uh, I was reading some of the critical acclaim for it. And I guess that this is the only movie that uh, Roger Ebert, like basically he watched it. And then after uh, this movie he went to watch his second movie of the day you know as was his job and he had to leave the second movie like 25 30 minutes in because he was still so emotionally affected by the gray and Damn. you know that's something that i think uh it, it says a left lot and went and killed a wolf Ugh, yeah, motherfucker. Like, fucking oh, stabbed him. timber wolves <laughs> um went to minnesota and just you know evil eyed the whole basketball team there uh because of the timber wolves anyway that was a, that was a reach uh but yeah I think the gray, you know, if the if one expecting... sports fan that listens to this pod, oh my God, they're speaking to me this week. It finally, is me. it is me <laughs> talking about sport ball. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot deeper than, than it was marketed as because, you know, the marketing material was like, Hey, you guys know Liam Neeson from taken, right? Well, this time he fights a wolf and like, yep. obviously the wolf fight, uh, spoiler alert is left up to our imagination and i don't know if you guys stayed Did you see the, the post credit scene yes yeah. there's a post credit both yes. my, my, i think they both kill each other to some degree yeah you, you see you them both say breathing that survive too right. yes right because you know all you're left with is the two breaths right right 
That you was crazy because that was me? the first time I'd ever but actually, seen that. Liam Neeson's head it. is only moving because of the wolf moving up and down. So yes. maybe he's dead and the wolf is still. I think it dying. leaves it up to the audience though because yeah. it's it's vague yeah. enough where you can say like, okay, he found the logging trail, he'll probably survive. You know or, what it reminds me of the ending to the thing, uh, where you see both guys yeah. still yeah. alive, looking <laughs> at each other, like, are you the alien? Am I the alien? Which one's the fucking alien? So, oh, and that's uh, so badass too. Yeah. By the way, we uh, so, should say for our listeners and viewers, uh, the reason I, I didn't outline that it's at the top of the show because I'm out of practice. We haven't done this shit in like two weeks. The reason we didn't pick The Thing or Cliffhanger or any of these other movies is, A, I told these guys don't pick those movies. <laughs> but the reason we didn't do that was because those are the very obvious choices. Um, right. We wanted to pick snowy movies that weren't so obvious. I, I, we tried to do that with these grab bags. I should have said that at the top. So that's why you'll hear the choices you're going to hear today. Um, Mark, really quick though, I wanted to pick pick your brain about this. The first time, because you're a big survival movie guy like I am now, and you love survivalist movies. Were you always like on this movie, loved it like from the first time you saw yeah. it, or did you have I to kind of come because, into it? You know me, I like heavy, serious movies about yep. death. This movie is totally about that, in my opinion. It's about yeah. like how different people or different types of people deal with impending death. And you know they're all gonna die because they even play. There's a sound effect that they play that high pitch, like, yep. you know exactly when a character is about to die. So I don't mm -hmm. think it's a surprise when these people die. It's sort of like telegraph. These people will die. And actually, one of my favorite scenes is when he's ushering that one guy in the first. There's three scenes that I really love. One is the number one I already talked about was when that guy introduces himself. The second one is when he's telling him that he's going to die and he has to accept it. That is such a heavy scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like this whole fucking movie is heavy. I've seen it maybe three times. Uh, and the last part I love is just like, I love that Liam Neeson asks God for help. And then he's like, you know, fuck it. I'll do it myself. That is yes. one of the greatest little monologues I've ever seen in a movie. And I think this movie has Liam Neeson's best work. And then there's, oh, wait, let me see what, let me get this guy's name because I always screw it up. James Badge Dale is in it for like two seconds. Oh, he's, he's the guy in the plane. Great he's as comforting. that dying guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, the first one that he comforts that tells yeah. him, you know, the warmth. And it's is such a short performance, but it, his death, it was actually, there's another one in Quick and the Dead when DiCaprio gets off. Yes. Those two death scenes feel so real yeah like you're there with these people and you yeah. can tell like they don't want to die it's actually this movie is very upsetting and disturbing and it is supremely heavy uh yes yeah. part of me was thinking like maybe this is my last viewing of this movie because it oh, does wow. it does too make much you feel a lot especially yeah. When you're getting older in age, it's sort of like, oh, yeah. shit. I mean, there's yeah. badass move, like scenes in this movie, but for the most part, you're just watching people die. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, or like come to grips with the fact that like, that's what I kept thinking about too, because I was like, you know me, I try to find the meaning in words, and I was like, well, where, what is the gray? Like, I don't think it's about the, the white out of the snow or anything, right? Like, I kept thinking it was about the gray. It's not black and white. It, it's literally the gray area between the choices that you make it's the choices and the fate and, and that and that there's a gray area in between and that's where these guys are and some guys will fight and fight and fight and some guys like Frank Grillo eventually learn kind of how to just let go and let it happen. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite moments too, by the way, is I didn't even fucking realize it because when the first time Liam Neeson said it, I was like, why the fuck did he say that? Because he's talking to Frank Grillo and he goes, no, in his Irish no way, he goes, no mas. No mas. And I yeah. was like, what the fuck? And then it I realized a the for tattoo a it was like, on bro. Frank Grillo's neck. And I was like, oh, because he's paying attention and talking to that guy and yeah. singling him out like so that he could speak to him. So the guy would actually hear him like that was a phrase that guy had probably heard throughout his entire life, getting into trouble, going to prison. Like, that's why Cause the first time you see Frank Grillo, he's in a fucking bar fight in the background, <laughs> like yeah. just fighting three guys. And I, I, it's just such a weird little moment, but it was such a sweet moment. I think that's what I picked up on this time. It was like, I was like, fuck the macho shit. Like there is some badass stuff in this, but I was more touched by the sweetness that would happen like that. Those little moments that I really picked up on. And I was like, I mean, it is the holidays after all. I was like, that's some fucking holiday <laughs> shit right there. Like that's a sweet, that was a sweet moment. Watching people die. And then yeah. here come the, the wolves right, right to <laughs> right, yeah. but I, 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 think, <laughs> I think too, you know, seeing like there was the one guy, uh, is it, uh, 
Dermot Mulroney's character, you know, yeah. you could tell he was like a family man and uh and and seeing like Liam Neeson have to deal with, you know, his wife's passing from cancer. And and I love how Joe Carnahan filmed some of those scenes where they would just rip the, you know, rip the fabric of the reality and the yes. dream that Neeson was having about his wife. It some would of rip the, that away. One transition when she gets pulled out of the bed and he yes. sits up yeah. is one of my favorite. There's actually a lot of great. cool stuff that he does in this movie visually. That's great. But I do yeah. like that. I find that Liam Neeson's character, he's not like a bad, he is a badass, but he's also like a kind and caring person. He doesn't, I mean, the only time he's really like fighting these people is when he doesn't want guy, that guy to steal the money from these, yes. these, these dead right. people. He's actually, he takes time to get to know each person and calm them down. He's actually, a, he's one of the most capable characters I've ever seen. And it's a shame that, I mean, in my mind, I want him to rescue everyone because I do like those characters he's with and all those actors, phenomenal performances. I don't think there's one really bad performance out Agreed. of them. They, yeah. It's, it's yeah. fantastic. Even the annoying guy, too. Flannery, is great. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. That guy's yeah. I mean, they, the great. thing is, they, they all make sense and they're all very believable in that setting. It, yes. it feels like you're getting like a full group of people with their own personalities and by the way one of my favorite parts toward the end is when he does start opening up the wallets and he's seeing their lives for the yes. first time essentially right. outside of like you know this snowbound hell hole and, and uh, it, it almost gives purpose to why they kept the wallets in the first place because that yes. shit's not going to make it back to the families you know he was like the last person to be basically observing their lives and, yeah. and, yep. and, you know, giving credence to the fact that they didn't have pictures of their family in the wallets and they had their IDs and he was like the last observer to their lives. Yeah, but again, like, just like a, them like a rock carn, almost like a, you know, a symbol of like, here's where everyone died. Right. feels like a sacred, yeah. Like a sacred mm -hmm. thing, like a marker. I was going like to say too, Mark, yeah. just like you said, like, how the interesting flip happens right with Frank, Frank Rillo where he's like fighting and then he like just accepts death. There's an interesting bit with the wallets too because the first fight that happens with the men is about a wallet. And then at the end, the wallet becomes this like sweet symbol. It was just like a really cool like twist on Joe Carnahan's part. I don't know. Nice. This is just like a very like, this is a fucking quality movie. Like, look, I, it's, I like Joe Carnahan's movies. It's underrated but, by the way. Yeah, and it's probably, yeah. I would say in terms of cinema history, we'll probably be, probably be his best work yeah, yeah for sure for sure i agree and and you know i feel like it actually took uh the elements of a couple of other snowbound cinema movies that i like but not as much and it felt like alive the movie alive from the early 90s great fucking movie which, which they which reference in this movie great they do yep they talk about <laughs> the can the cannibalism that they had yes. to resort to in alive and, and you know alive starts the same way basically uh crash into a snowy mountain area but um and then also I felt like it had elements of the edge a little bit with oh, um, yeah. the Alec edge. Baldwin and Anthony yep. Hopkins. I love that shit. Especially with and the torches. Anytime I see men with torches in the snow, I think <laughs> what one man can do, another can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and those were both on, on my short list for snowbound cinema. But then when I saw the gray, I thought you guys liked Carn Joe Carnahan. I feel like we have, have yeah. maybe said a positive thing about him before. And uh, I feel, I agree. I think Mark, you said this earlier, this is Liam Neeson's best performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe not the movie with him that I'll watch the most, but it's his best performance. It's really emotionally deep when the trailer makes it look like he's just this badass operator, but really he's like, the emotional center of, of the whole fucking movie. And he's great at it. So pretty much his only real badass scene is the end. You know, yes. that's the first he time he smashes those bottles. To on the be ground honest, when I them. did first Love see it, shit. I was like, this is the moment the audience has been waiting for. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then yeah. it cuts to black. And I was like, ah, yeah. shit, ah, dude, I, I my audience actually him, like, did that. Fucking my movie. audience had a moment like that. I remember in the theater, they were mad when it cut to black. I remember <laughs> that. It was like the same thing at the end of, uh, Inception, when the fucking top kept going, same thing. Oh, yeah. My audience was like, "Oh, what the fuck!" I remember it was that and the gray. Everybody's uh, walking out like, "Is he dreaming?" Everybody's all is pissed off now. All of a sudden, yeah. Um, yeah By the way, I, can uh, I just say one thing? The first time I saw this, I actually I saw it in Singapore and I was running late and I missed the suicide scene at the beginning where he's sticking the gun in his mouth. Yeah. So on my second viewing, I was like, I actually preferred it when Without I didn't see that. that. 
I loved it when it was just them getting on the plane, the crash happens, and sure. then things are slowly revealed that way. And just like his suicide stories revealed, it happens later, just like his wife. And I was like, wow, this is great. And then I saw it the second time and it had that the that scene at the beginning. I was like, it's kind of, to me, this is just me personally. I was like, it kind of ruins it because it's like, you know, he's going through that already. It's kind of cool if he because he's hidden it so well if it actually remains hidden for the audience too yeah so that well, was I feel like, like that did was it feel like, like when you watch a movie that has an extended scene and you're like god damn it this is weird yeah didn't yeah, you felt like well, other the funny thing is sudden? i i had recommended it to, to my cousin so i went to see it with her and then it had that suicide scene at the beginning but because of that that does make it weighs the film down slightly in my opinion because now you're dealing with a very heavy topic straight yes. from the get-go. Rather, right. I think I prefer the heaviest moment to to be him ushering that guy into 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 death. I think that's like such a good moment. Yeah. And also, by the way, I did see this once on an airplane, and that airplane crash scene is the worst thing to Was watch. Was it intact on the plane? Because <laughs> usually, if there's if there's plane shit in a movie on a plane, they'll cut it. I think oh, they really? left this one is because it's so first person, you know, wow. yeah. you're not really seeing stuff. You're just seeing those like quick that. Uh huh. Yep. I remember I was on a flight and they literally had the movie flight with Denzel, whose whole centerpiece of that movie <laughs> is one of the most fucking horrid things. It's like yeah. plain, like inverting, right? Upside down. Yeah. And I remember I being though. like, I'm tempted to see if they cut that out of the movie. Because like, is the movie fucking 15 minutes long on this Edward Delta Rubin Airlines flight? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like they're it's like just it's Denzel just a, drinking it's a movie about Denzel. Yeah, exactly. Just doing something. So <laughs> they play that right, flight ninety three movie and it has nothing in yep. it. I will I will no, say it's just one. a bunch of people rushing out. <laughs> like you're like, from what? To do it's what? It's just them going on the plane and then it goes yeah. credits. So are just a bunch of mean people got on a plane, that's it? That's the that's yeah. the movie? <laughs> that's the whole story. <laughs> so guys, where would you rate this in the in our snowy scale? Again, so keep in mind the gray takes place in I don't know. Do, do we do we ever know where we are? We're just in the Arctic wilderness. I, I think guess, it's like Alaska. I was thinking it was like well, kind I think of they're more still Alaska, in Alaska, yeah. but yes. it's like the bush. You know, it's there you like go. The wild of Alaska. So is yeah. it? Is it? Which is all? Of is Alaska. it? Uh, <laughs> is it? I'm um, snowing. Yeah, is it snowing in my neighborhood? Is it snowing in my neighborhood? Is it? Yeah, that was that was. I'm gonna. Go, I'll go to the was top. It? Are you yeah. going right for? Snow Are we calling the gray a snow just right off the bat, dude? That's my vote. I would Mark, say Snowmageddon. Yeah, I'm going. Snow. All right. I'm. You know what? I'm not going to go, go against the grain here. <laughs> the gray. By the way, Snowbound Cinema. We rate it. Snowmageddon. We rated a Snowmageddon on the snow scale. If you guys like this movie, I highly recommend uh, Arctic with Mads Mikkelsen. That is an. I was actually going to select that one, but I felt as though it would be too much survival. Mm. But. Can if never you have guys too much survival. Love that type of. I mean, I, that's one of my favorites, actually. Arctic. So, I've never I, seen I'm, that, and I'm into survival. It's fantastic, uh, like this too. So I have to check that out. And I love Mads Mikkelsen. He's great. I oh, love that you brought up the edge too, all. Tommy, because I was gonna <laughs> do the edge, but I didn't mark deliberately because that's one of those Hall of Fame Matt and Mark movies that, like, if I would have brought that to this show. That's the reason we've not done an Edge episode, people, is that it's just going to be 30 minutes of me and Mark quoting that movie. That's it. <laughs> That's all it is, because we love Nothing that movie. Else. I did it. I fucking did it already in this review. <laughs> I'll kill the motherfucker. <laughs> like, we're going to talk about Bart the Bear. We get obsessed with the Edge. That's the reason I deliberately didn't bring the Edge, because I was like, it's going to fucking derail the whole goddamn show. <laughs> Yeah, and it enough. still has. To some it still degree. has exactly. Look at us now. Here we You are. had Here one are. fucking job, Matt. <laughs> okay, so before we move on to our next movie, you know what we got to do? We got to watch another. It's a grab bag. People got to watch commercial. another old commercial. Let's see. I have a. I have a few of these queued up. I don't remember what this one is. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Well, at least it was mutual. And the look he gave him when he said he missed the cream, it wasn't I just like, uh, didn't seem like this was just about yes, Oreos. Yep. It wasn't like, the Oreo cream. And like, I don't remember oh, that. Oh, I know, Stu. I remember very well. <laughs> That's why you're getting a chunk of coal this year. <laughs> yeah. Give yeah. me the cream. That's like, why you're God working as a it. fake Santa and I'm the real guy, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Enjoy the there mall, bitch. That, by the way, people at home who can't see, that commercial was for Oreo. 
<laughs> By the way, that commercial was so old, it looked like the Lego version. It did. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was like it Minecraft. Was, it was so like all 8 bit, very yeah. pixelated. Uh, did Michelle Gondry that. direct this? <laughs> <laughs> Did you, do you guys remember that one? I that's the first time I think. No, I have not. Seen that. I don't remember that one. You know, when I when it comes to Christmas commercials and songs, I remember two very clearly. I remember Mariah Fruity Pebbles. Carey? Ho ho ho! <laughs> I'm ha ha hungry. I remember that. Okay. And that I remember guy the was Santa's ho. San- <laughs> and I remember the Coca Cola one. You remember the, co- the Santa the polar Claus bear? is coming. Santa Claus is coming. Santa <laughs> packs are coming. You know what I'm talking about? Santa was <sighs> coming in that other one. Santa too. is coming. <laughs> yeah. Basically, these are all about Santa ejaculating. You know, guys, someone I'm talking about. Santa Wait. always gets his. Always. Santa gets his. Wait, <laughs> I, I do remember that, that Coca Cola one because it would play all the fucking time. Dude, you that's what I'm saying. There was like that one. Here we go. house the fuck out of the way you convoy of trucks how much coke do we need in this you town? fucking cum convoy get out of yeah, here get out of here we're missing the cream you need to hey. have went and stop coming and went get out of here <laughs> <laughs> sorry mark i didn't see you drinking man. I didn't see I the drink. have taken a sip in the middle of that. <laughs> our next movie uh there's no way to segue from that <laughs> <laughs> our next movie is uh, is my pick i actually chose vertical limit um and i'm gonna just tell you guys why i chose vertical limit uh besides the fact that i think it is a fucking oh, kick-ass amazing. action movie it's fun as <laughs> and hell, i yeah. love martin campbell uh it is because this movie i have a weird connection with this movie is weirdly tied to my my wedding uh i don't know why it just happened what? to be a random movie <laughs> yeah mark i've told you the story where uh, Jess and I were making like party favors for our wedding reception. And the movie that we were watching while we were doing this randomly was Vertical Limit. So I actually can chart <laughs> my anniversary by how many times I've seen Vertical Limit. So Vertical, li- <laughs> Vertical Limit. I'm sure your wife loves <laughs> Jess that. loves that. She's like, my whole life revolves around Babe, movies. it's our movie. This Vertical asshole Limit. chose Vertical Limit. <laughs> You'd have chosen any other film. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this movie has a special kind of connection, a weird random connection. Uh, so I'm instantly kind of protective of this movie because of Wait, that reason. Was that the first time you saw it, by the way? That was or the very first see- time. That was the very first time because I missed it for some initially reason, when it was I don't in know theaters. Why, I thought you had seen this in the theater when it no, first came out. I wish I had seen this in the theaters because I fucking love Martin Campbell. And this is, by the way... I will just his do this best film. <laughs> it's one of his best, but this is when he's coming off his fucking streak of golden eye mask of Zorro into vertical limit. It is awesome. And you could see people from both of those movies turn up like the girl yeah. from golden eyes, you know, boys with toys. She's the like nurse lady that's in this. You All can right. also see the guy from no escape, another Martin Campbell film. And uh, the bad guy from Lethal Weapon 3, he's the dad in the very beginning of vertical limit who tells oh, nice. Chris O'Donnell to cut the rope. Um, and also, there's just a, there's a fucking stacked cast of awesome people in this movie. Bill Paxton is in it in his heyday. Bill Paxton was very into playing slimy dudes, as my yeah. wife likes to say, like the guy in True Lies, <laughs> like his character in Predator he, 2. Yeah, he's always he, the he played a good ball. sleaze ball. That was just, yes. yeah. Yep. He's That's a total perfect word for it. Nice one, Tommy. <laughs> uh, and also, <laughs> great, that random minds, guy, great that minds. random guy is in this that looks like Michael Bay, but he's not Michael Bay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm uh, talking you know, about? <laughs> Longmire, the fucking guy that plays yes, Longmire. Yes, right? dude. He's you know, also he's the guy one from of the Matrix. People. He's uh, yes, yes. He's and one he's of also the in the agents. Meg. He's also in the Meg. He's the guy who has a past with Jonas. How dare dude, you, dude? That Jonas. guy has the weirdest career. He's like <laughs> yeah. in one of the greatest sci-fi's. Then some weird western. Like he's playing a sheriff all of a sudden. And it's funny in the western because obviously I think he's like in Wyoming, so he has like a, a you know out west country accent, and yep. then. People are, you know, they see him in other movies and they're like, what? And it's like, yeah, no, this dude's genius. <laughs> but I so, will say this. Don't don't be mad at me, Matt. I, I love the cast uh, for the most part. I love Scott Glenn in almost oh, anything. He's, he's fucking awesome. Um, yeah. I thought <laughs> his the two, intro's the best. The two leads, though, were the poorest of the cast choices. <laughs> Excuse in my me? opinion. Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> and how uh, fucking dare you tommy i, know, I love I know. chris o'donnell do you really <laughs> i hope well, it's, to each their own. <laughs> it's ever since yeah he does the he get a pass because he's robin does he get a pass 
I mean, I kept seeing, I'm like, Dude, Robin's climbing fucking a mountain. family's <laughs> always falling off a of shit and splatting. <laughs> yes, what I was going to literally make that? that same joke. He's, he's had a He's always watching his career. family fall down yeah. shit. <laughs> and Robin Tunney is okay, I guess, but uh, just neither. So I'm a big fan of, of climbing, like actual uh, stories of real, real climbing incidents and, and movies they've made about climbing disasters, you know, like Everest and, and stuff like that. Oh, Everest and is good. Yeah, that is Everest good is good. And and I actually read that book into thin air by John Krakauer and it's chilling. It's fucking literally like it, it made me become obsessed with Mount Everest and with huge mountains at a point in my life when I was too out of shape and old to climb them. So uh, <laughs> now I, I enjoy them vicariously. But that being said, you know, these elite climbers in the world, they kind of have a look about them. And for me, like Scott Glenn in the movies got the look, but they Chris look O'Donnell, like leather bags with hair. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And like missing toes from fo- frostbite. And like, <laughs> yep, I love that. You know, um, but other than that, though, I thought that the secondary casting was great. You actually get a super early screen role from uh, Ben Mendelsohn. He's one yes. of the oh, that's Aussie right. yeah. brothers. Yes. Um, and then I'm it's probably like, Benny's like every villain of yeah yep. i was like is this the first <laughs> nice person that ben Mendelssohn yeah. has ever played probably like the first and only um, and he's young that was crazy super when I fucking first saw young him, I like, yeah yes. shit and then you By get the... tamora morrison who obviously yes. is Django boba fett, fett. Yeah. um so that was or yeah boba fett it's got Django. a really stacked cast though yeah. like back, especially yeah. even back in the day those were like big names like chris o'donnell was pretty big By the yeah way, at the time yeah he touching was the void by the way Yes, that's a Buddy. fucking solid that's movie. The one. reason I didn't pick that one, by the way, was because I was like, that's based on a real thing that happened to a guy. I can't sit here and make jokes about it. Right. I will pick Vertical Limit. It's, it's a little been more a long serious. time you can make jokes about it. <laughs> by the way, speaking of cut, I, I don't know. I, I just thought it'd be funny if like in these movies where they're like, you gotta cut the rope. And he's like, I'll cut it. And the guy just, instead of, because he has to kill himself, he just cuts his own throat <laughs> and just hangs on the rope. <laughs> He's like, now you got to do weighs it. them down anyway. <laughs> Fuck weight. it. Dude, that speaking of that awesome. scene. But it's like that I... moving music. Just but just like just like the gray, way. right? There's a great reprisal of that scene, the cut the rope, where at the end, I love it because it's done wordlessly. Where Scott Glenn, it's like three things in one. It's like, we're getting the payoff for Chris O'Donnell's character to have to make the choice again. Then the movie kind of excuses him and doesn't have to have him make the choice. Scott Glenn's doing it out of revenge to kill Bill Paxton for killing his wife. And I really it's wish badass. he just cut off Bill Paxton, though. It's like, <laughs> seriously? He just you don't want to at least off? try to cut him off first? He's a big guy. Right. Yeah, also, I knew by the, the, way, minute, the think... minute he found his wife, I was like, it's over. He <laughs> wants to go. He wants to punch out. Hey, yeah. it's just like, do you think um, uh, Joe Carnahan watched vertical, vertical limit, limit. There's a lot of parallels yeah, also there is. the other thing too is like there's also that great overhead shot of you know snow drifts collapsing at, yes. over the edge yeah that's awesome and 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 really a lot of the climbing sequences and the mountain sequences they look great um i think some, some very real a lot some of yeah. climbers i think some like real life climbers have have levied some pretty heavy criticism towards the movie as far as like the, <laughs> the technical shit it's an action action movie people come on climbers are these like weird sociopaths like who gives a shit this is like a fun movie they're in their own (laughs) yeah dude this is a fun action movie man yeah this is not the the accurate climb one-to-one a24 climbing (laughs) movie (laughs) this is martin campbell like he can't just land a helicopter on the cliffside it's a fucking whole sequence that fucking sequence is amazing by the way this movie the effects, because I actually rewatched it with my brother when he was here, and we were both on the edge of our seats, like, "Holy shit!" Some of this <laughs> yeah. stuff is fucking insane. And it aged to well. a degree where Still you don't good. see it today. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Even the even the stupidity, and it's stupid, but I say that as a compliment. The stupidity of the nitroglycerin, and even the fact when they're like, "You gotta yeah. get the nitroglycerin out of the fucking get sun. The sun, get it out yeah. of the sun." They like went a, all sorcerer. <laughs> yes. Like the way that that was found out, by the way, in the movie, if you've never seen it, is there's a scene with like a Pakistani general, like. I'm going to have some tea. And he lifts his tea and then Dude, he gets blown hilarious. the fuck out of his cap. Yeah. And, and I started laughing. I was like, wonder? that's how Martin Campbell introduces that concept to you as a viewer. This fucking guy got blown up. Okay. It can't be in the sun. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no subtlety at all. Like literally. Yeah, and then the, awesome. first scene, the first scene with the nitro, the guy gets it on his boot and they treat his boot. Like it's got that fucking, fucking hilarious. And then, but wait, you know, if it, if it is, is it supposed to be nitroglycerin or not? Because, Nitroglycerin is also used for like 
people with heart conditions, but if you get some on your hand, it like accelerates your heart rate to this oh, really? insane degree. It's actually very dangerous. I think dangerous it's like, to touch. it's like a heavy metal, like mercury. Like it's not supposed to touch your that skin. That'd be awesome. If like a fucking, I could see an old ass Kung Fu movie doing that where like a guy dips his hand in nitroglycerin and like slaps guys and like they explode. <laughs> that'd be As fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'll let these guys talk a little more about the movie, but I love it. I think it's it's one of my favorite Martin Campbell movies, but it's just a fucking excellent crowd pleaser action movie where there is barely any downtime. Like yeah, I, so I, much I always forget this movie. Yeah. Is yes, it's nuts. loaded with fucking heart pounding thrills. I know I sound like the outside of a blockbuster box, but that's the way it sounds like. <laughs> there's nothing but heart pounding thrills every five minutes. Even the quiet, the so called quiet moments. Even when Scott Glenn finds his wife. Even when you're in the cave with Robin Tooney and Bill Paxson, your heart is always in your throat because the movie just never lets up it's there's it's always phenomenal. some level of suspense going on regardless of what the <laughs> yes, scene is exactly it's right. crazy it's not not only is he it's it, this movie does so much stuff too because it's like not only are they trapped with this guy but oh he's killed people previous this way and <laughs> yeah, oh wait exactly. he killed that guy's wife right. so much stuff it just gets connected. deeper and deeper yeah. and deeper like and, <laughs> yeah. and and similar to the last movie we talked about to the gray everybody is dealing with multiple things trying to kill them right like the elements yep. are still a factor for anybody that gets uh you know up above what twenty five thousand feet i think yep. is like the and death zone edema um, which i swear and, uh, was like yep. the name of a tool album wasn't it is. The name it of is. Tool album? actually yeah it is um <laughs> every time yeah. i hear that i'm like tool <laughs> that was a very 2000s thank episode. you thank you very appropriate thank you I'll take my Which, Josh Hartnett haircut to go. Bye. It, it, it is cool that they that they talk about that. Matt, your because... teeth start to develop a yep. gap. I get a gap. <laughs> Ew. Ow. Where's where's fucking Dawson's Creek? Help. That's what I need. <laughs> where's Pacey and Joey? Yeah, I need Pacey and Joey. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just think obviously, you know, the the people have to watch out for each other as far as you know, whether it's a dumb Aussie dropping his nitro down the side of the mountain or bill paxton trying to kill everybody by the way to survive. wasn't that scene nuts when the the fucking thing dropped and that huge yes. explosion goes oh, on yeah. the explosions like are, you thought I, he was good god dude don't you miss the days of these are the real greatest pyro, explosions real explosions they look so goddamn good man even the actually, tiniest explosion like you know they were like not planning for it to be that big because the camera is not even framed correctly it just yeah. engulfs the flame the frame it's awesome i think but it the is thing sweet. is like these movies like don't they make you Maybe it's because we're we've seen so many CG explosions, but when you watch these old movies, like I think I mentioned Sorcerer before, when you see these explosions, it almost feels like people have died. Yes, right. they're like, so like huge. someone like someone cast and crew. You mean and like the, like yeah. the camera op in a first AD is like scorched. It's like I'm waiting yeah. for the next <laughs> shot where all these people have like no eyebrows or <laughs> yeah. eyelashes because they've all been like scorched. That would be a faces. great gag in like a Mel Brooks movie. You cut yeah. every subsequent scene; they don't have any eyebrows anymore. Yeah. That's Just amazing. Like a, an ashy body outline against the snow. <laughs> like <laughs> this yeah, person dude. was disintegrated. Uh, we uh, raised over kids, it before. Were you guys afraid of falling into a crevasse? Oh yeah, no, dude. dude. Like I live down south. We don't have crevasse. I was more well, afraid of getting bitten by a gator. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not it's not an active fear, but I guess when I entertain the thoughts in my head of like, what would it be like to go and climb Everest, climb K2? That to me is one of the scariest parts of the whole climb is passing through any of those crevasse fields where literally uh and 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 in real life they would not send anybody to save you. You'd be fucking yep. You'd done. Be done. They'd be in like, fact, by out. the way, that was the worst rescue mission ever because most of the people died. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was calculating the lives lost to the lives saved. And I was like, this is totally not And he keeps worth risking it. more and more lives every time. Yeah. It well, really is. One guy has it right. He's like, why would we? It, isn't it the real life climber guy that's like, why would you risk the yeah. lives of 10 Ed, people for three fucking by people? By the way, Ed I fucking love yes. that they have these real climbers that can't act just to give the movie just clout. Give... <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really like, hey, like general audiences who don't do know that. who that it's is. Dangerous. General audiences I'm... have no fucking clue who that guy is. They can just oh, tell no. they're supposed to know who he is. They're like, <laughs> right. oh, they're giving this guy a lot of screen time and he can't act. He must be like the president of the climbers or something. I mean, even the way Bill Paxton uh, introduces him, he's like, I don't need to introduce this guy. Like, oh, yeah. That was he's like, been, he didn't he fucking know who he was. <laughs> you should yeah. know who he is. You know? 
Um, you guys know him from his cover on Sports Illustrated. <laughs> yeah. He just keeps giving you some facts, some tertiary facts. Um, I saw this on... guy in my hotel room when I went to check out. They got he his was poster. in a in Backpacker magazine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In the recent Sky Mall, they had a picture of this guy with some ropes, <laughs> and I got to think he's probably a climber. <laughs> legendary by the look of them ropes over there. Uh, wait a minute. We did breeze over it before. I want to weigh in on the Chris O'Donnell debate. Okay. Tommy is a no on Chris O'Donnell. Mark, yeah. I can't tell if he's being ironic. A definite, is a yes for I Chris fucking O'Donnell. love that. No, no. I, I like him. He's like, I'm, he he does a good job as that character. Tommy, you're, you're our guest. Role. I don't want to gang up on you, but I have to side with Mark here. I have to give Robin a pass. I give Robin a pass. I'm not saying he's awesome, but I do get psyched when I see him because I'm like, hey, it's Robin. Dude, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> All I needed to see was him. I know it's the fucking stunt double, but when he runs yes, and with the two jumps, axes, jump across that gap. Yeah. Dude, that is one of the coolest. I Actually, I believe this movie bombed, right? It, I think it so. did middling, middling. It didn't bomb. But it I just, just did. Middling. I remember seeing that scene. I was like, "How the fuck did this movie do so poorly?" If you have these amazing action scenes, that's how greedy like... we were with blockbusters and huge entertainment movies at the time. Um, well, and it was we just 2000. didn't need to go see this. You know what right. I mean? Like we had just come off the Matrix and shit. Like general audiences were like, "A mountain? Who cares?" <laughs> yeah, Bill Paxton. <laughs> who gives a shit? I've been to the Matrix, bitch. I yeah, don't I wanna care. Know if I'm, I want to know if I'm real or not. I don't care. Yeah, about dude, that. they had real <laughs> shit on their mind. They weren't worried about fucking mountains and stuff. That's what happened. But I will, I will say, say this... Chris O'Donnell, I think, is a good leading man in this, and I do think it's purely nostalgia. I, I give him a pass because he's robin like so do, do you like him as robin then i do like him as robin I, okay. I like him a lot See, I, I, as fuck, I, I never liked yes. him as robin and i feel like because and i'm glad you said that mark he is annoying as fuck as robin right I couldn't not see that in the movie when he was so persistent, when he was like, we're going to go save my sister, Annie. And like, I don't care what you say. We're going to go. He, oh, yeah. I was he's like, super. Robin he's, won't but, shut up right now. But, you know, that's what his wheelhouse. <laughs> that's is. what he is. Yep, you know? exactly yeah, exactly yeah. right. Le- yep. Liam that's Neeson's the operates. quiet, tough guy. Chris O'Donnell is the Chris O'Donnell is the annoying guy that yep. kills people. Yep. Fair enough. But let me also, let me then pose this also last gets question. Me, if you watch these two, if you watch the gray and vertical limit back to back like I did, Mark, <laughs> in your mind, were you inevitably comparing the run and jump across? Like I was thinking about the guy in the gray who runs to jump across to the, the trees, tree line and yeah. Robin hoofing it with the ice axes to go. And I was like, who did it better? Oh, you know what? Chris I O'Donnell of? for sure. That guy hit a fucking did it way branch <laughs> going <laughs> down. That one dude, and he fucking died and got eaten. That guy lost. Oh yeah, and he Ultimately, lost his life. Robin Chris wins. O'Donnell lived to be in CSI or whatever the fuck. He is. Uh, so this is why I, we love the grab bag people. <laughs> when I saw Chris O'Donnell running with the axes, it actually reminded me of Terminator Two. Robert Patrick chasing after the fucking yeah. car. Where he's you know? slicing the air. Yeah, yeah. It, that's what I got from it. If yeah. you have two hook objects in your hand and you're running in a movie, it's gonna be fucking awesome. You're gonna be great. Yeah, you're, you're basically setting <laughs> you yourself and the audience up for success at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so guys, it seems like we're rounding third here. Let me go ahead and remind the people at home again. So let's rate Vertical Limit on our snowy scale. Is it a... It's snowing in my neighborhood. Is it snowing? I think it goes up a little higher. Is it... Yeah, that was that was quite a blizzard. It's quite a blizzard. Or is it... Snow Are we going to have two Snowmageddon in a row? Mark's going Snowmageddon. I'm Tommy. going Snowmageddon. I don't care. I mean, I don't want to buck the average. So I, I, I'm I, between Snowmageddon and Blizzard action. I think okay. uh, because I'm such a nerd about some of the It's a gray stuff, area. <laughs> I'm in the gray. I'm in the gray. So I can go with y'all and I'll say Snowmageddon to uh, not upset. All right. Nerd, well, so there's no way that I'm gonna <laughs> that I'm not gonna give my own pick a snowmageddon. So guys, vertical Don't limit. Don't worry, we're not gonna feed you to the wall, Tommy. Oh my God. <laughs> this is officially a snowmageddon, dude. I got two Liam Neeson on my side. In a row. Oh no, Mark. That's before good. we get to Mark's pick, let's have one more cuddly Christmas commercial. I don't know if it's cuddly. I don't know why I said that. I want it. I want it. I want it. <laughs> what with how much more sexual innuendo can oh we draw God. from these stuff? stuff more more than, than their uh, stuff. Uh, Here we go. We get shit. <laughs> oh yeah. Why don't we get any good Christmas commercials anymore? We don't. Oh, they're all. You know what it is? Everybody's doing the emotional commercial now. Which, by the way, fuck that. I hate that trend. Stop yeah. toying with our emo. I don't need an Amazon. Like everyone to teach should me. be crying. Yeah, I don't need Amazon to teach me how to care about my family during the holidays. Like, get fucked. Like, and 
who's buying a fucking Lincoln Navigator for everyone in their family for Christmas? That's the oh my god, that yeah, that and you know? that Tommy and Lexus. I was like, shit, I gotta yes. buy matching Someone Lexus a Mark, car. Mark, you I gotta buy I... your mom a Lexus, or you don't care about her. That is what Matthew McConaughey is telling you. Yeah, but you also gotta get it for your siblings and your in-laws. Yeah. And <laughs> then you can all race to the cabin. And Mark, you gotta morning. pony up for that giant bow. That's like an extra <laughs> two grand. They yeah. milk that because they know. They're like, oh, you want that bow, don't you? That's two grand, bitch. It's not a gift without the bow. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> then it's just can a I, car payment. Can I pay you with old McDonald's dollars? No. <laughs> On second thought, yes. <laughs> yes, I will take those. I miss That's those. A, <laughs> That's a valuable currency. <laughs> I got 2,000 bucks worth. It's like <laughs> as, as wide as one of your cars. This is better than a $1,000 bill. This one has the McBurglar or the fucking McBurglar. <laughs> Who's the McBurglar, bro? <laughs> you know what it was? My brain thought Mayor McCheese and and thought uh, hamburglar and went mcburglar because cl clearly we know who the hamburglar is we're 80s babies <laughs> we know who this guy is um you know that one i don't remember the applebee's one i think i didn't first... realize they were around in the 90s to be honest no <laughs> yes good I, call yes i think the first applebee's commercials i remember were like the eating good in the neighborhood type shit so um <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. I wonder, I did McDonald's that. ever make a McDonald's box? Oh, fuck yeah. Wait, let's watch real quick. Dude. I hope so. Because that's, that's what it was. I wanted to. I'm uh, so hungry. <laughs> I, I know. But here it is, dude. McDonald's fun box. God damn it. <laughs> Don't leave out the unbroken eye contact from a positive role male model. It, this guy, <laughs> they give you a dad's love that you will never get from your real dad in this commercial. The dad is like, I love you, son. Let's That's a real here. dad? <laughs> Thank God, a real dad. That's what happens. By the way, the McDonald's Christmas ones, the Christmas bucks, they weren't fun bucks. They had like fucking fancy Christmas foil on them. They looked That's amazing. They had a yeah. Santa on the front and shit. Sometimes Ronald McDonald would pop up in the margins, like fucking yeah. doing some shit. You'd be like, but, look at this dollar. <laughs> it seems like all the mega corporations are, they. it's just such a generic holiday now that it's totally unfun. Yes. Yes, dude. Well, They've zapped now... the fun out of it. Instead of being like, hey, kids, isn't this cool? They're like, it's almost like in They Live, it's like subliminal now. They're like, spend, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's why every fucking commercial is just over the top, like buy Jeeps for everybody. Uh, put all this shit on Amazon Prime. You know? I love spend. you, son. What did you get me? A Jeep spend. Wrangler. <laughs> yeah. This to Jeep can drive on a mountain. Cherokee. It can back up right to the edge. Have you seen that commercial <laughs> where all the Jeeps back up right to the edge? Uh, maybe. No. Yeah, it's like a vert. It's like, no, it's brand new. Every time I put Peacock on, there's a fucking commercial. Every time we're watching it, my wife is like, I hate this fucking commercial. The Jeeps <laughs> are on the top of the mountain and they're like backing up to show you the rear camera capability and like the tightness of the suspension and shit. And it's like about to go over the edge and the Jeep stops at like the perfect point. And they're like, any car can do that, which is the funny part. Yeah. You can stop any car at an edge, <laughs> even without like, a hey, camera. Do you hear they make Jeeps that stop now when you want them to? <laughs> like, they don't go. They don't continue Did you to buy go. me one of them cars fancy stopping Jeeps, the Dad? <laughs> I bought you one of the fancy stopping Jeeps. Like it stops on the dime. Rover, you'd be dead right now. But luckily, <laughs> you're in a Jeep and you can stop. By the Before way, all the Land Rover ads are like, this one fits eight people. Like, I don't even have one friend near me. What the fuck <laughs> am I going to do with eight seats? I'm not, I'm not driving eight people around. Get the fuck out. What am I, a fucking hotelier? I'm driving you guys around? They're like, fuck, you know, when you're, when you're driving a pack Uber of people Black, through this Where they have the desert? bigger truck or something. Uber Black is fucking pricey. Uber Black is like $280 just to go somewhere dumb. Like, hey, you want to go to Applebee's? It's 300 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> We know you can't hey. afford the ride because you're going to Applebee's. So we're going we're gonna to need you to pay up front. Uh, Speaking of ride. things happening in mysterious, expensive cars, let's get to our next film. 2014's Black Coal Thin Ice. This was selected by Mark. Mark, I will let you take it away. Mark, oh, why, did you no. pick this? why did you pick this for Snowbound Cinema? Well, first of all, since most people don't know, I'm actually half Asian. So I thought I'd introduce you guys to something from half of my culture this is something my mom and i would always go to the asian film festival in new york city and this is something i watched there and i really enjoyed it it was just a weird mystery it doesn't have like normal structure 
And it almost feels like you're just watching events unfold rather than it having like beginning, middle, end. And you're just experiencing it through the lens of these characters. And so many odd, weird things happen in this movie. One of my favorite scenes, unfortunately, the trailer spoiled it. So I hope you guys didn't watch the trailer. But when they're in the hairdresser and the gun drops out of the the jacket and that guy just fucking wastes everyone. There's so really crazy scenes. Also, my favorite scene, too, was like, and I know I think I freaked Matt out, but that transition to it going into a snowscape and <laughs> yeah. time has gone past. He's a drunk. He's just like, yeah, oh, oh, wait, I got to talk about that really stolen. quick. So it's one of the coolest transitions. I've regular seen listeners movie. know that we did not have a good Nicholas Cage grab bag. Um, Mark picked leaving Las Vegas because he thought it was going to be like this <laughs> heavy totally Nicolas Cage movie. And it was like the heaviest shit ever. It's and like so the saddest movie it's ever. It's become a shorthand now where I'm like, is Mark Nick caging me every time he has to pick something? <laughs> and when I was like, okay, guys, we're going to do Snowbound Cinema. We're making our picks and Mark picked this. I was like, okay, it's got ice in the title. Sure. Okay, I'm watching the movie. The first 10 minutes go by and I'm like, where's There's the no fucking snow? snow? Where's yeah. anything? Not only that, this is like a hot movie. Like all these people are sweating. They're in like fucking unbuttoned like business <laughs> shirts. Like it's clearly like a super hot, <laughs> humid climate. And I was like, did this motherfucker Nick Cage me again? <laughs> and then thank God at the 20 minute mark, dude, I paused it and I texted Mark. And I was like, dude, did you fucking Nick Cage me again? bro? Where is the snow in black hole thin ice? And he's like, relax, chill out. It's coming. <laughs> and literally the next second, the Blam. movie ushers you in with this great transition where it's like, ha fucker, it's cold. And now, since you've spent the 20 minutes in the hot, humid uh, climate of wherever the, wherever they are, right? They're, they're, are they in China, Hong Kong? One of those. Yeah, I think they're up more in like that almost Siberian region. Okay, yeah. It's actually, it's very similar to the gray. It's just this uncomfortable landscape where you're just like, why the fuck do people yeah. work here? Well, because you're in that... <laughs> you're in that for the first 20 minutes when you get to the snow dude then you feel the cold like i think well, more than anything you're like for the rest of the damn. movie by yeah. the way that's why I cho- another reason i chose this movie it's one of the few movies where visually you just feel uncomfortably cold right yes and and, yes. and i think i think the tone of the movie is also extremely cold uh the characters and how how like life and death is dealt with and just kind of like handled so wantonly it's 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 a very cold feeling movie emotionally and i I do want to say to echo what matt was saying about whether or not you nick caged him i was like this is my payback for recommending urban cowboy at first Uh, you know and and then on on a patreon app and then uh i well, the one thing that I was a little bit, um, I guess I'll even admit it, I was a little intimidated by is I don't watch a lot of uh, movies with subs. I don't watch a lot of foreign films. And part of the reason is, you know, you got to be in the mindset to sit and pay attention. You can't be fucking around. You can't be scrolling on your phone. You can't be, you know, getting up, taking the dogs out, packing a bowl of weed, whatever. You got to pay attention. Um, so I kept trying to pick the perfect time to watch this. And, you know, I finally settled on, uh, I, I ended up watching it over a couple days cause I watched it like on my lunch breaks. Um, uh-huh. and cause I work from home, I've got that, that luxury to be able to do that. And, you know, I, <laughs> when I first started on Tubi and they're speaking and there's no subtitles, I'm like, Whoa, wait, what the fuck? So I had to turn some, that got on me on too. <laughs> Because yeah. I thought it and was then, a choice. I was like, oh, we're not supposed to know what they're saying right well, now. Well, that's what I thought at first. Great if you guys Dude, well, so thank God. Through. No, no, no. I, I went no through five minutes and I was like, hold was the saying. fucking phone. Like, I was yeah, like, Mark, full conversations cool, I don't know what are they were happening. See, what the I fuck thought, is happening? Yeah, I paused I it. I'm like, put thing. those fucking subs on now. And yeah. I was like, look at these motherfuckers. Dude. They didn't automatic. Oh, Fuck boy. Tubi, man. Tubi's awesome, but they're also dicks sometimes, like with well, that shit. Fucking automatically well, way, put it if on. You notice when I was sending you guys my selection, notice I said I would give like the time of the movie and then yep. if it had subtitles. Because I was I wanted a poll to see if you guys were okay with subtitles. Because I do I understand that. Yeah, it's totally one of those. And in fact, when I went to see Hero in New York City. Some guy went and didn't realize it was subtitled, and he goes, "Great, I gotta read the movie." <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, I mean, so I, got I, like got, I sort of, of understand that because it's like when you're reading, sometimes you miss the nuance and the performance in the face. Yeah. yeah, but this one, fortunately, is a bit 
more visual and it's sparse in dialogue. Well, it's, it's not very, comparison. yeah, it's not very dialogue yeah. heavy. I will, I'm curious if you guys had a similar experience. Um, I did miss a little bit of the uh, emotional uh, heft of the performances because my subtitles were arriving a full like three seconds before yes. the line was spoken. So and sometimes, sometimes too, oh, it seemed like man. they were like missing. Fucking too I was like, this, is that really as eloquent as that guy put that? Because he's saying right. so much in the scene. And I feel like. He said. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? He said. I like feel like Tubi's like short changing me on my subs. I thought I that too, so. Tommy. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you could tell that the, the, especially the two main characters, they were really great. Their performances were amazing and very human uh, and, but very cold, uh, which was fitting. That guy's the one of my favorites, actually. The, the, the lead the main the guy, guy? plays the detective yeah i think it's He's the first really thing i i am familiar with seeing him in um unless unless you guys pull something out of the woodwork he's mainly like, oh, just yeah. in like chinese films so i like that pervy really guy that ran in. the laundromat that guy was great <laughs> yeah. i always love a good pervy actor like if you could that's a hard thing to nail <laughs> well, no pun intended uh and that guy did do it in a creepy fucking way he has some creepy by the way scenes in her this. her reactions to him feel so real to yes oh yeah that, like, yes oh, especially like, too he, when you realize the whole fucking thing crawl. all of this the events of this movie we should say this movie's a noir it's a no that's the reason yeah. i i yeah. was like, like go for it because i was like two things we never have subtitled movies on this show this is a great opportunity to squeeze one in and two i don't think we've ever done a noir and i was like this is perfect because i kind of feel like a lot of other movie pods and other movie people i follow were doing noir vember now we would never do that on this show, but I was like, oh, that's kind of fun. I always like when people do like these fun movie events, like community events. So I was like, perfect. We'll do a noir. We'll get, we'll kill two birds with one stone here. And that actually helped with the pacing of the subs. Cause I also think, by the way, just going back to the subtitle thing, I think that if a movie's very fast paced and characters are talking a lot, that's when it's hard for you to keep up as a viewer. It's asking a lot of you, but thankfully sure. noirs are a more of a slower burn. And this movie is more of a slower burn. So thankfully, like, you're not missing too much information because thankfully the movie does take its time and characters take their time. Um, and the I filmmakers think... also very good at like doing things visually. Like for example, there's that, the scene at the ice rink oh, to, yes. show, to show that things are, you know, they're like for her, they're, you know, overwhelming or you're feeling a certain mood. You just see that and it has that beautiful classical music and it's sort of fading into the distance and the lights are going away and it's getting darker. Yeah. He does a lot of really cool stuff where you feel the emotions visually. Yeah. yeah. I think I definitely wanted to hook more into the narrative. Like the movie did lose me story-wise. I was like, okay, I don't fucking know what's going on. And I did have to cheat a bit and look at Wikipedia to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How does this guy know this bit of information? Oh, I see. I missed that part. Like, I liked this movie more when I kind of gave up trying to follow the story. I was like, you know what? I'm trying to hook too much into the narrative. I just want to enjoy, kind of like when you watch a fucking Alejandro Jodorowsky film, like, I just want to watch weird shit happen. And there's some great weird shit that goes on in this movie. There's a really awkward sex scene in a Ferris wheel. There's yeah. another great bit. <laughs> yeah. My favorite scene in the movie is when the main cop guy just starts dancing. It reminded me of like a David part. Lynch so movie. Random. Like, so all random. of a sudden, he just but fucking it's... dances and it keeps going. <laughs> But you have to think of, and he's an alcoholic failed, you know, yeah. and he's with his group of friends and they finally, they solved it, but he's still the same person, you know, it hasn't. Yes. Well, and I, and really I feel like he, him, he almost feels cool. he, he he's the same person, but he feels like alive now because he went and he saw yeah. the case that yeah. a, hadn't been solved for years and had been, you know, vexing him and was his, his reason for exiting the force. But also he, uh, yeah, it just was like a sense of redemption, and so he's cutting loose on the dance floor. Is is how I interpreted it. By the and... way, I like that he totally interrupts those other that dance group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You guys, he, he just, just fucking, like turns it there's off. There's a full on dance class happening behind him, and he just starts dancing. I did like that. Fun. Also, too, oh, another yeah. weird thing, and I was like, why did this happen? Was when that random lady freaks out and she starts crying in a bathtub. <laughs> yeah, when he goes to the, talk to her, remember? Wife. Yes, yes. Like there were just bits like that. Like once I gave into just being like, I kind of want to just experience this almost like in a David Lynchian kind of way. Yeah. I started to enjoy it a lot more because there were beats where um, it was tough to, to, to follow. But I do love that. Like the crux of the mystery, it's, it's about something so superficial. It's, it's all just about a fucking jacket. It's all about yeah. a jacket. A it all started with a jacket. jacket. <laughs> if he, if they didn't fuck that jacket up, 
This girl wouldn't have had to do all these pervy things with this guy. She wouldn't have had to have the boyfriend try to kill him. She wouldn't have got roped into all these murders. Like, but there's some weird shit going on, like when he does the hand signals behind his back. Oh yeah, what was there's up with some that? Really interesting shit that happens. Like this, I remember reading about it after, and there's like so many different multiple explanations for things. Like one is that that the pervy guy is actually the husband, and he does those signals to tell the husband to kill this guy. Yeah, like someone's oh, getting too shit. close to so, again. There's different ways. That's why I love watching this movie. I think I've seen it probably. I think I've seen it. This is my third time. But every yeah. time I watch it, you can pick up others. So when you do read about it and re if you do decide to revisit it, you can pick up these other storylines. And it actually changes the entire movie just having one piece of information like that. But it's kind of open to interpretation to some degree. There's a lot of vague stuff in this movie and it yeah. leaves it to the audience, I think, which is what I like about it. It's one of those movies that warrants multiple viewings. If you do like that type of stuff, like for yeah. me, I, I'm a big fan of noir. I love Chinese films. And to see that combination is really cool. Plus, it's yeah, also you, like it is loaded with ambiguity. Like you're, you're right. Scene to scene, there are things where you're like, this could go either way here. But what I'm supposed <laughs> to take from this. Well, the thing yeah. is, I could never guess what was happening next in this movie, which I oh, yeah, really love. I, I kept waiting for someone to get like their fucking head chopped off after that uh, <laughs> salon yeah. scene. I was like, anything can happen now, you know? And I did like that bit with the guy with the ice skates when he finally gets confronted by the other cop in the alley and he fucking uses the ice skate to cut his neck. Yeah. yeah, that was good. And I liked that cop too, his buddy. Um, that guy did a great job, I thought too. Yeah. As, as yeah. like the, the cop that was still involved that knew his friend was, you know, distraught over never solving this case, but still had to like, you know, operate within the parameters of he's a cop, my buddy's not. So, and, and, and I, I think a, a sense of cold was over me most of the time watching this movie because they're just walking around smoking cigarettes with their ears out in the freezing cold and like <laughs> I had to pull I had to pull a blanket on me man I was like a little old grandma watching yeah. this movie also too it was fun just in a, a theming way right snowbound cinema right we got some big swings here like you're fucking caught in the snowy wilderness with the gray at vertical limit you're up at the top in the snow capped mountains here it was cool to see snow in a city. Like it was kind of cool to get right. a sort of another side of what how cold life can be when that happens in that location. So, um, and yeah, the cool I, thing too is like if you look at the snow in those other two movies, it's actually beautiful. But in this yes. movie, it's fucking dirty, it's dirty, yeah. and driven over. It's stomped not romanticized on. It's like that at all. Really gross yeah. gray slush, you know. And yeah. it feels scary, especially like there's a great shot. I did. There's one shot in this. There's a really cool shots of this movie, but the one shot that I remember is when he's following her when she's skating away from the ice rink and she's all alone and she leaves the ice rink and there's just this long kind of paved track and she's all alone at night skating in the snow and there's something really scary about that image um yeah. and i was just like fuck that's like a snowbound cinema moment right there like it feels chilly and it just feels like you are truly there's there's two sides to being cold you're cold but then the worst kind of cold is when you're alone and yeah. it, and I felt it in that shot. And I was like, hey, that's a snowbound cinema shot. That's good. <laughs> nice. So, guys, Black Hole Thin Ice, where does it go on our snowy scale? Is it... Uh, it's snowing in my neighborhood. It's not snowing in my neighborhood. Or, or, or is it... <laughs> yeah, that was that was quite a blizzard. That's quite a blizzard. Or is it... Snowmageddon. Snowmageddon. Right, so, so far, we've had two Snowmageddons. Where does this land? For me personally, I'm going to, because I've seen it three times, I'm going to have to put it at the very top. You go with Snowmageddon. Snowmageddon. Mark's going Snow. But it has a special Snowmageddon. Okay, Mark's going Snowmageddon. Tommy, where are you going? Um, I will break the ice, so to speak. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so this is probably mostly because of Tubi's presentation. <laughs> for me i probably landed in blizzard territory um i don't know that i'll watch it again mostly because i know i know the riddle to the mystery but you do have me curious mark about catching some of those little little nuances like the hand signals and stuff so maybe down the road i will watch it again and if it's like on prime or someone who has maybe a little bit of tracking subtitles. with their yeah. subs i mean i this is even i'll generally never dub a foreign film i'll always watch it with subs this was one of the few times that i was like if there was a dub track i would totally switch to that same right 
Yeah, you know, just just so I could look at all the beautiful. Like, hey, what uh, are you guys doing over there? Backdrop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like when you like, try to watch those like cool all. new. Sh- There's like a <laughs> Netflix has been doing this a lot lately, where they have like a cool new series people are talking about, and you start watching it, and it's just dubbed. There's no other option. They bought it from another country, and they did not bother to subtitle it. But some of them are really damn good. Some like, of them are they, good, but I can't get, try to get the like, dubbing. The lips to match in some cases. I mean, it's never going to be as good as the original, but no. no and that's no, why I try no. and preserve that original uh, experience as much as I can. But I do think, I mean, an hour and 45 minutes of Tubi being three to five seconds ahead of the yeah. actor's mouths. It, that does ruin a lot it was of hard, surprises, too. It was hard to completely, like, dive in, you know? And, yeah. and, and I felt like I had to watch the screen all the time because you couldn't naturally wait for the dialogue to pop up when it would happen in a natural occurrence because you <laughs> yeah, knew it was coming before, you know? Yep. Um, so for me, I think I've landed in blizzard territory, but I do appreciate uh, being pushed out of my comfort zone. And I enjoyed the experience of it, especially for this topic. It I felt cold watching this movie. And I, for that, I think it's a great pick for this episode. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to side with Tommy here. Also, for the exact same reasons, I'm going to give it a... Yeah, that was that was quite a blizzard. It was quite a blizzard, <laughs> only because um, there was a lot I liked about it, but the viewing experience sucked, and it's purely Tubi's fault. I think, Damn. had I seen this uh, with like a reputable player, uh, we love to give Tubi shit on the... Well, I love to give Tubi shit on the show, but they were especially fucking Damn, late to actually, the party now I this think one. I probably should have picked Arctic. That I think would have been a that would have selection. that would have still going to watch that though. Yeah, I'm definitely still going to watch. And you brought up another one too. Like when we when we were trying to decide on movies, you brought up another one that I had kind of never considered before because I thought it looked like a family movie. But I was like, that actually looks pretty good. Uh, Eight Below with Paul Walker. Mm. And I was like, oh, oh fuck, yeah, okay, I might actually the, catch where that. Where he's like, it's like a dog a, racer, a, right? Yeah, he's like running a sled team. <laughs> it's like Iditarods. Yeah. By the way, I I have a special place in my heart for those like you know dog sled movies i don't know why <laughs> see I'm, a, I'm always afraid to watch them because i'm like a mega dog nerd yeah baby. you're a dog guy and i'm like i don't want the fucking dogs to die so i yep i haven't seen that movie probably specifically because i'm concerned about <laughs> i'm like there's a website shit. by the way Tommy. Walker. it's like does the dog <laughs> die, does the dog die? yes yep. my wife actually checks that a lot and and so for me in a lot of movies i mean because in in the gray a bunch of wolves die dog yep. cousins, I guess. And uh, I could give a shit less about that. I'd kill those <laughs> wolves too, you know? Um, but for, for there's a lot of movies and I've heard actually great things about eight below. I, I I've heard it's got a lot of heart. And it actually really has like it. a really it's on my watch rating. list. I'm probably going to watch it this week. I think. Yeah. I'll, I'll maybe get to it. Uh, when I am in a, a mood where I'm like, yeah, it's all a movie. You can, you can handle this man. <laughs> you know, <but laughs> my, my chihuahua's got uh congestive heart failure for the last eight months. So Ooh. like I'm yeah. sensitive to dog movies at the I, moment. I am too, dude. And that's the whole reason I couldn't watch that fucking, even Mark was like, you should watch call of the wild with Harrison Ford and the fake CG oh, yeah. dog. It doesn't even look like a real dog. And I was like, I don't think I can do it. I can't see the dog in peril. Like I just yeah. cannot fucking do it. I did watch that. Cause I had read the book like three or four months before. So I felt well enough prepared, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, yep. the CGI does look bad, but I actually think though, that movie was, was done pretty well. Um, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, oh, call fuck, the now wild. you guys are making me want to watch that. Now. <laughs> God, damn it. Not bad, Snowbound Cinema. By the way, I cinema. like that we, say, we said that, and we just literally watched three movies with a whole bunch of people getting slaughtered, and we were yep. just like, yeah. nah. Brutally, that's by the, the way. Beyond the Brutally. snow and the cold, that's the main theme of our movies today, is everybody <laughs> fucking dies eventually. <laughs> we're all going to die. I have they to say, died. I think the gnarliest deaths out of these three movies were in The Grey. I think The Grey had some of shit that I can't stop seeing when I close my eyes, especially like the, when the wolves are biting the guy in the face, just yeah. gnarled remains. I think there's that had like the worst some, of it. By the way, there's also something about like, I don't know if you guys feel, but when I see blood and snow, there's something like really disturbing about it. Yeah, it's very Like visceral. when they make the fucking blood bag and vertical limit. And the shit yeah. like dude shoots <laughs> up through the crevasse. Yeah. It always makes me laugh too because they awesome. just 
took this guy's a bag of this guy's fucking blood and yep. just blew it up. Yep. Yeah. Just was, shoot it up. When I pipe. first saw that movie, I was not expecting that to happen. I was like, yeah. that's a little because it's like a really PG thirteen studio <laughs> action movie. And like, by the way, there's a huge blood gag in the middle of this movie, and it goes everywhere. And and visually, that scene is <laughs> is one of my. Is favorites. it Chris O'Donnell in this movie? Are we talking about <laughs> yeah. the same movie? Yeah. Robin. Oh Robin yeah. Robin has a blood bag. It's Robin not Robin. Blows it out, <laughs> dude. Uh, but I love that, you know, you see that arrow or whatever <laughs> pierce through the snow. But then I love how the bag explodes against that white, pristine yeah. snow. And like, that's actually pretty. That's a, one of those moments where you're like, oh, that's a good fucking idea. Yes. I should do that if I'm ever <laughs> I in a crevasse. <laughs> I hope Bill one Paxton. of my companions dies so I can bleed. Them. Yeah. You're fucking do you guys do that? Like when you watch these survival movies, you take mental notes like, oh, fuck. For the I, edge, for I gotta sure. remember this. Oh I gotta remember so, this. So sometimes, book. but but you got to be careful because you know we were all singing Liam Neeson's praise earlier, but actually everything that they did in that movie is counterintuitive to what a survival expert would tell you to do. They would tell <laughs> you, they would tell you to stay with the plane and insulate the plane and do like what they did in that alive movie. You need to live in the plane yes. until help comes. Piecing out and looking for help on your own is like. The last thing yeah. they recommend. Also, the other uh, thing I was thinking is like, there's so many fucking dead bodies around this airplane. Just pile them up outside so these wolves can just feed, the feed off of them. Yes. And then, you, yes. and then if you need something, then you can eat some of these people too. You know, it'll be like the day before spring, and there's one or two bodies left, and they're like, "I think we're good. I think yeah. they're gonna leave tomorrow, <laughs> and we can just walk out." The wolves the are all super fat now. <laughs> yeah, dude, obese. we can outrun them, no problem, man. <laughs> Look at that one. It's got liver problems. They're just walking fast past the wolves. Yep. Like, yep. Fuck. They just waddle. Shouldn't, <laughs> eat, shouldn't have eaten Tom, I guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but I yeah, I definitely, and, and when I was younger, you were talking about this earlier, Matt. When I was younger, I think it was more like, what would I do? And now I'm like, man, I'm not flying on a plane. Uh, fuck that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Yes, exactly. I'm not going on K2, and I'm definitely not uh, blackmailing any uh, laundromat ladies <laughs> for yeah. sex if I've they ruined my jacket. I definitely now, I dude, I'm right there with you. I definitely now appreciate more like that. I'm like, man, I'm glad that I have the job I have and the life yeah. I have. I'm so fucking glad I'm not a secret agent or a mountain climber or a yeah. guy who kills wolves or a, a wolf sexy sniper. laundromat lady. <laughs> I'm glad I'm just me here, you know, having a fucking some spaghetti, you know, <laughs> like I'm just a guy. With syrup. Yeah, slippers. exactly. Right. Yeah. My uh, These guys are worried about eating fucking wolf meat and staying alive. Meanwhile, like my ass is making a baked ZD at home. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So I, I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> Yeah, you you appreciate uh, the preciousness of life as you of get older. The indoors. And fuck yeah, yes, yes, and and that's actually one thing you're looking. The great at. indoors. Yeah, they, <laughs> they need to make that movie and just film uh, old guys sitting around like, man, I'm glad I'm not doing that. Um, but yeah, I think definitely when I was younger, any of these movies you're watching them and you're like, fuck yeah, dude, I'd be Liam Neeson, bro, totally. Yeah. Be Liam Neeson, <laughs> that's what know? I was saying. Like, it's a such a different experience watching that movie especially as a young man to a grown ass man because it mm. just changes your perspective on shit you understand things that you didn't understand before i mean just speaking for myself i did you know like there were just things yeah. that hit a lot harder this time around and same thing for vertical limit right i was like you know as i saw that as a as a younger man 11 12 years ago you know and now i'm like every time i'm like oh my god i'm like they're families jesus or i'm like <laughs> look at that guy that guy oh my god like you notice scott glenn's missing all his toes and you're like oh yeah. how's that how's that to live with you know what you're, i mean like, like you're thinking new york old man problems. that have like nubs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're seeing the yeah you're seeing the pakistan army base and you're like why can't pakistan and india just make peace man yes wish... dude totally <laughs> i was like bad. oh i was like i gotta on. be reminded of the politics here <laughs> yeah. jesus i'm just trying to watch a martin campbell movie i gotta think about this now <laughs> um so as we do, we do ask uh, our listeners to contribute to this show. And they did. They came through because mm -hmm. we were talking. I said, what are some of your favorite snowy flicks? We're covering these three movies. What are snowy flicks you guys love? And our listeners came fucking out. Oh, sweet. Uh, I want to give – and these uh, all came from Instagram at the Matt and Mark Movie Show. Steel Lens Cinema said, does the thing count? I said, absolutely, it fucking counts. We're just oh, not yeah. reviewing it. Top dog, so, probably. A lot of shots for the thing. Uh, Patrick M, our buddy Patrick M had a couple. He said Fargo, 
is a snowy oh, flick he likes a lot. Good one, yeah. So I, I almost picked almost Fargo, picked it. but I oh, thought yes. it was too obvious. I thought it was because I, I, I know you said you wanted it to be a little more obscure. Dude, great minds, great minds. Yes. I said the same thing. I was like, I can't go Fargo. It's too. If I come there, if I told them no, the thing, and I show up with Fargo, they're gonna be like, "Fuck you, man!" Really? Yeah, piece right. Of shit. <laughs> can, I, can I say? Can I say this though? Uh, Fargo is one of the most perfect movies ever made. In my opinion. Agreed. I, there's nothing wrong with it. The and one of the most impeccable. quotable movies ever made. Absolutely. I would argue. And the up there with Lebowski. I think the Fargo and Lebowski, you could have a quote off all day. It's almost like the directors of those movies knew what they were doing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they're yeah. related and then there's just no movies really well. It's they're just weird. good guys. Uh, they're just yeah, good guys. Yeah. Uh, another shout for the thing comes from our buddy Movie Collecting Wolf. Nice. Um, as well as G Burdex, who also said the thing, but he also wanted to call out Groundhog's Day and Thirty Days of Night. Oh, yes, Thirty Days of Night, 30 days of nice. night could have been a good pick. I like that one. Speaking I almost of Josh went Hardy. there. I almost went there, but I know I was like, they're going to expect horror from Tommy Nuggets. I got to go non-horror. <laughs> I appreciate uh, by the way, that. that overhead shot that. in that movie is like one of the best when they're just yes. tearing through the town. Whew. That that's a fun movie. I mean, I say fun in quotes. It's a fun watch. It's a good movie. Uh, our buddies, I told you, we got a lot of these. A lot of people came out. Our buddies, Film versus Film Podcast, Across the Pond, uh, our English friends, they said The Thing, obviously, but Hateful <laughs> Eight. They wanted to call out Hateful Eight. Yeah, that's that's a good one, too, because, I mean, right away, they're in this uh, blizzard in Wyoming. That's a, more think, of the so. great indoors, though. But I tell like, you, they, they Hateful Eight. Out. That was more like me in a cabin. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm just going to stay <laughs> yeah. in this cabin. Like, I'm going to get some hot chocolate and hear some racist, terrible shit that's uncomfortable, but... <laughs> It'll all pan out in the end. Uh, uh, and, and our buddy Jeff from the Lovers of Cinema, the Cinema Lovers, he uh, wrote a bunch of them. So I'm going to go ahead and read off Jeff's choices now. Ooh. He said Christmas Vacation, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said Wind River. That's a yeah. fantastic That's awesome. a great fucking movie. With Elizabeth Olsen and Jeremy yeah. Renner, I believe. Yeah, yeah. that's actually that's got one, one of the best ending shootouts. I love, yeah. I love the that ending shootout. The sound design on it is fucking awesome and that's Jeff, that's a little uh, bit of a like a western noir a little yeah, bit Wind yes River. it's like a modern um, western i love those. Yeah. yeah uh jeff also said he could use a revenant rewatch i will never rewatch the revenant ever you didn't like it i liked it but i just don't want to re-experience it i'm like it's i've been intense. there i'm good yeah well it's funny i i scooped it on 4k like over a year ago because it was like 10 bucks but oh I that's a good still, pickup actually it, it is and actually ten dollars uh, is good for that <laughs> From what I hear, I I hear it looks amazing because I obviously you know it was it was real that film. You haven't watched it in a year. Or so. <laughs> it's it's been it's been over that at least since my last watch. But I'll probably get to it this winter. We didn't have any snow here. In North <laughs> I'll Carolina confess, it's year. nice to hear Mark uh, mock someone else's 4Ks instead of mocking me. <laughs> Every week he gives me shit because I don't open 4Ks. Yeah, I'll, I'll take some of that shade for you, bro. Yeah, thank um, you, dude. I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're not done. Of... By the way, Jeff continues. He said, Die Hard 2. Funny enough, Tommy and I were talking about this before the show. Die Hard 2, he mentions. Yeah. Very snowy flick. Yep. He also says Dumb and Dumber, which I always forget is like a snowy flick. Oh, shit. But, but, but wow, only that's like really half of it, though. Good one. That's you know? true. Yeah, that's so, true. And and obviously, when, when you had said in the email, like, not just something with snowy scenes. Uh, yes, and, the majority of the movie has to be right. snow. Yeah. Uh, and Jeff also said Tommy Force. took that real serious because that movie from minute one all is snow. snow. That's why yeah. Mark, I was like, this motherfucker knows the rules, <laughs> and he still came out with twenty minutes of no snow. See, I, I had faith in you though, Mark, because ice was in the title, so I was like, there's gonna be some fucking. <laughs> well, because cold if here. you watch the trailer, which I did, I'm sorry, I did watch the trailer because I wanted to confirm I was watching the right movie. It's it's all snow in the trailer, and you're like, God yeah. damn. But the first 20 minutes, I was like, is there like a sequel or something? Did I pick the wrong movie? <laughs> yeah. uh, and Jeff had to have one smart ass response. And it was anytime James Bond skis. <laughs> That's a good one, too. I That's just like watched... all the Roger Moore ones. Yep. Yes. Honor Majesty's Secret Service also has some good snowing, snow skiing. Yep. Um, and the producer in the booth coming out with a newer movie that uh, I watched. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it for the Rex because it's actually on my rec list. Nice. Oh. All right, fuck it. All right, my my producer in the booth is saying. <laughs> All right, it's a, uh, it's the boss Mary, has spoken. <laughs> it's Merry Little Batman, <laughs> which is an animated movie that is brand new, and it's a Christmas movie, and it's actually great. And you'll hear me talk more about it on the rest. I just after saw this. that on. Uh, is it Prime or? It is on Prime on? Video. It's an original. It's one of these original DC animated movies, and sometimes those can be hit or miss. This is one's it better a hit. than the Killing Joke. 
Yes. It is <laughs> leagues better, my friend. Leagues nice. better. Yeah, I um, just saw that today and was like, that could be good. It's so, fun, man. It's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of the same spirit as Lego Batman, which is a movie I like quite mm. a bit. Yeah, Lego um, Batman is awesome. So thank you to everybody who, uh, for speaking up on Instagram at the Matt and Mark Movie Show and offering up your snowy flicks. Now you people know why we didn't review the thing. Cliffhanger was another one I moratoriumed. I said no cliffhanger. And I think that was it. Although, man, now I want to watch Cliffhanger. Fargo would have been on there. Apparently. Fargo would have been on the moratorium <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yep. I almost went, speaking of noirs, I almost went with Ice Harvest. Yeah. But that movie is so blue and so down. I was like, I got to get some fucking excitement and some jazz in here. I want I want vertical. I actually it. don't think I've seen that. Hold it's on. with John Ice Cusack, Oliver good. Platt, Billy Bob Thornton. Oh. Billy Bob Thornton, yep. It's uh, a it's it... like a neo noir. It's it's I hate I hesitate to call it Actually, a black comedy because there are Christmas... funny moments in it. Yeah, but it's a Christmas movie. It's a Christmas it's a fucked up Christmas, or a Christmas movie. movie. Yeah. Hey, uh, can I read my list? And obviously it's long, so we don't have to like necessarily jump into each one. But can I tell you some of the almost picks? Dude, that please. I almost threw out please. there. So one that I love that does not get enough attention, Ravenous. Um, I love oh, that fucking movie I fucking so much. fucking forgot about Ravenous. Ravenous Damn it. is like great. my favorite soundtrack, too. Yes, yeah. the score is amazing for Ravenous. Um, okay, Snowpiercer, more of like a sci-fi yep. touch. Um, Misery, uh, which I, I love oh, James Caan. Yeah. Fucking great. And- great obviously God damn these are all good picks we should have yeah. just let tommy pick the movies <laughs> for everybody I mean, everybody so, would have just randomized and picked one tommy pick and and i didn't know some of these were either too on the nose or i felt too far out there so the black coat's daughter i don't know if you guys have ever heard of that oh that's a new new horror movie right it's oz yeah perkins. and it's oz perkins so yep. it's weird and yep. it's uh although but, it would have fit right in with black hole thin ice <laughs> I think, and it's funny, actually, when I got done watching Black Hole Thin Ice, I was like, I totally could have picked Black Coat's Daughter because it's very yep. kind of That would have been welcome. Ooh, yeah. Interesting. Um, gonna, I'll write this down. Everest was on the docket at one point. Dude, I was afraid. I almost picked Everest. Mark and I saw that in the IMAX, and we both and I loved it. I think we both loved it. And yeah. um, I was afraid to pick because I was like, that might be too new school. They might ding me and be like, this is too new of a movie. I, so, so when, when Everest when was first, on my mind, it was on my mind. The limit destroys. Everest. I know it's hard. You have those two, and they're very, they're and similar, I, but they're different flavors. It's like, yeah, it's like it's like uh, chocolate versus vanilla. It's kind of hard to, you know, they've got their they've got their pros and cons yeah. uh, depending on what mood you're in. Yeah, but does Everest got double ice pick action? <laughs> uh, I don't believe so. Run, no. no. But no. it does have Josh Brolin missing his nose. It has ladder nose. action. Nose. Exactly. Ladder action, ladder action is good. Judgment Night ladder <laughs> action. And Everest is one thing, I guess, that holds a special place in my heart because I love the book by John Krakauer, the Into Thin Air. So, like, I think they did a pretty good job of, you know, relaying it into, into film. That was one of the um, best IMAX, 3D IMAX experiences I've ever had was, was Everest. I bet. I it did scoop fantastic. that in, in 4K as well. So, and Mark, I have watched that one on 4K. <laughs> oh, nice. By the way, by yeah. the way, didn't, wouldn't you think it's funny if, if those, you know how they show the actors, like their little memorial plates on the top of K2? Yeah. It, I was, I was thinking it'd be fucking hilarious if they actually put them up there and then people like get to the top of K2 and they're like, who <gasps> the like, fuck are these people? They're like, Josh Brolin died? <laughs> oh. I thought that was just a movie. I thought you were going to say they get up there and it's the leftover character plates from Vertical Limit. They're like, hey, kind of looks no, no, like that's what I was saying. It's those ben Vertical Mendelsohn. Limit ones because at yeah. the end they have that really bad like <laughs> is that it's Michael like a Bay? green screen shot of this like <laughs> shitty pile of rocks no, and it's based on plates. Dude, at first, did you have a moment where you were like, "Where's Ben Mendelsohn's plate, you fucks?" Because they take the longest time getting there. I'm like, okay, okay. Well, where's the two Australian brothers? Yeah, they did a lot. Shout out to They're Australia people, by too. The way. Yeah, they're people too. That's right. We got a lot of Australian uh, listeners now. Shout out Australia. I saw that. You guys I was, were, I you was guys looking out for you guys, okay? I was like, where's the Aussie brothers? Okay. <laughs> and then uh, did you know that Vertical Limit is all, it's the first movie Martin Campbell filmed in his native country of New Zealand. So that's kind of cool. Oh, that, shit. Like, oh, wow. Uh, over by Aussie, their neighbors. So um, there you go. On Good location for that. Um, and then the last couple that I almost went with, Wind River was on my short list. The Long Kiss Goodnight uh, with Gene Great Davis. Great fucking oh, movie. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. Love it. Die uh, screaming, motherfucker. Yeah. One of like, those uh, badass final lines ever. And Samuel, that's one of Samuel L. Jackson's best, yeah. I think. Putting you know, my keys like, in my pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Awesome fucking movie. 
uh he's like first you're all oh fooey i broke a nail and now you're like let's kill this motherfucker yeah um, now you go into a bar and sailors come running out yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry I, I can quote shane black to we're all fucking sick i've yeah. told you that's why we can't do the edge i mark and i would be quoting the whole goddamn movie it would be like two men <laughs> like a two-man show you'd be going to see a play like a radio dramatization of the edge that's what it would be is this orson wells what am i tuned <laughs> into? welcome um, to matt and, then... and mark Dra- audio theater <laughs> And the last two that were almost cuts, uh, Let Me In, uh, the vampire flick. Oh, and, uh, that's a wait, which version, solid the pick. The well, I US was gonna, or original? I was gonna go with the U.S. version, uh, mostly because, like I said earlier, I can be lazy about subs sometimes. Um, yep. I will, I but that one has a slightly different subs. name, right? I think it's called Let Me In. It's got the, the first one, the, the, the Swedish <laughs> version is Let the Right One In. <laughs> that's what these snowy movies miss they need a little swedish chef in each of them yeah yeah that would have bumped them all automatic snowmageddon automatic yeah. snowmageddon. Snowmageddon. that'd be great if all the characters in black hole thin ice talk like that i don't need swedish subs. accents i don't need Dude. subs i'm just you gonna ruined my coat at the laundry <laughs> You owe me some sex now. <laughs> There's an eyeball in my noodles to her. Beer. <laughs> How did By the way, what did you guys across? think about that eyeball in the soup? The eyeball in the noodles made me gag, <laughs> especially because yeah. it has great sound where it was like, it was it like was those swishy. noodle sounds. It reminded me of the Lost Boys <laughs> scene of like, maggots. Yes. You're eating maggots, oh, Michael. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one, one billion people can't be wrong, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. Oh, wait, uh, Tommy, did you have any more Snowbound or that was it? Uh, I think the last one was Scott Pilgrim. Because, um, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, is that it's kind of snowy. snowy. That's, uh, yeah, in the wilds of Canada. And, yeah, like, you know, Chris Evans that. is grinding down the icy railing and, like, you know, flying off into oblivion. That is, like, one of the best scenes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I love have that you guys movie. watched that anime Scott Pilgrim takes off? Have you watched that? Is it good? I haven't. I haven't, I haven't watched yet. I haven't watched. I've heard I just love things, Scott Pilgrim, though. but yeah, same. I've heard good things. I haven't started it yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, so there you go. That's it for our 2023 holiday grab bag. We covered Chris O'Donnell. We covered McDonald's bucks. We covered <laughs> dying in plane crashes, wolf attacks, <laughs> sexual uh, innuendo, getting Santa. killed by an ice skate, getting killed uh, by an ice skate, uh, sexy laundry ladies, awkward sex scenes and Ferris wheels, nitroglycerin, <laughs> mountain climbing. We um, did it all. I we think. got it all, dude. I would <laughs> say this is a all. pretty solid. You know what? I'm gonna give this year's uh, theme. Snowmageddon. I'm gonna give it a goddamn <laughs> snowmageddon. Uh, snowbound cinema, guys. That's it. Happy holidays. From everybody here at the Matt and Mark Movie Show, including our guest, I want to thank him, Mr. Tommy Nuggets, for the joining us. Our first ever Nuggets. guest spot. Thank you, guys. It was super fun. That anytime, was a blast, by the way. Anytime you got a tight little niche you want to find someone uh, to hop on for, you let me know, because I'm all about that shit. We love hearing that. We love Tommy <laughs> around these parts. Super fun guy. Do you want to call anything out, Tommy? You want to call your Instagram out? Anything? Yeah, I mean, we're still uh, kind of pedaling along CTSO with Tommy Nuggets on Instagram. You, um, you know, most folks that follow know we've been on a little bit of a hiatus this year trying to get some stuff worked out, but uh, I'm still there and I'm definitely still nerding it up over movies and I'm collecting like a motherfucker. These Black Love Friday that. sales broke me a little bit and, yep. uh, you know, all the all the sales are digging deep. So Tommy Nuggets is still here, uh, just, just kind of doing it slow right now. So keep your eye yeah. on our page. Maybe we'll be back in 24 with some, with some fresh shit. So I also not. love, I love having Tommy on the show because, uh, A, we just love Tommy with B. It's always yeah. fun to talk shop with him. So I'm also yeah. happy to be the like, hey, while you're waiting for Tommy Nuggets, you come on over to the Mad Mark Movie Show. We got some Tommy Nuggets for you. Oh, we got a lot yeah. of great <laughs> Tommy Nuggets I mean, appearances. You, you guys, and I, I've, been, I've been so busy just with family and, and life stuff. I, yeah. I get on Insta to see what Matt and Mark are up to. So yes. I mean, you guys are my connection to the world and the, the world's connection to me. So much, much appreciated. On that hell yeah well we're big tommy nuggets fans yeah um so there you go do go give tommy a follow over on instagram ctso with tommy nuggets you know where to follow us at the matt and mark movie show thank you to everybody happy holidays gentlemen by the way happy yes. holidays Same i should have opened with that you guys you guys stay warm out there <laughs> stay warm and stay safe and stay Fuck vigilant yeah. avoid the snow avoid the snow avoid the snow at all costs all right we're out of here peace peace Peace.